one minute. Welcome to Lynn Cullen Live at PGHCityPaper.com. Email your questions and comments to Lynn at PGHCityPaper.com. Well, hello there. Hello and welcome. Good heavens. It's July. (laughs) Oh, Lord. It's July 1. Uh, Welcome to it. And uh, welcome to an amazing... I mean, I, I... Sorry, you know I'm a pirate fan, but I mean, it's just... It's scary. It's just scary that they're so good right now. But I, I think this, this, I've been saying this for the last three years. This is the year. This is the year. Wow. And I don't ever recall so many extra inning games. It's just amazing. All these games, you know, one by one. I, if you're not a Pirate fan, I feel for you because this is so much fun. I happen to see... Um, something that was posted on uh, the Major League Baseball uh, website. And someone had written, oh, wow, how amazing it must be to be a fan of the Pittsburgh Pirates right now. And it is. It is. It is. Um, So it's Monday. It's raining. I was um, in the skies over the country um, this weekend. Uh, went down to St. Louis, and it's raining everywhere. It's amazing. It's just raining no matter where you go in the United States. It's raining. <laughs> and it's not raining constantly. It's raining like it rains here. It rains, and then maybe the sun comes out, and then it rains, and the sun comes out, and then maybe some incredible storm blows through, and then the sun comes out. And I don't recall a, this weather's odd, not to mention, of course, the weather in the Southwest. Uh, I'm assuming that f- the, uh, the, the horrible wildfire that the firefighters were fighting in Arizona is a cause, was caused by this extraordinary heat. Yes? I mean, that's part of the picture? I don't know. I'm making that assumption. But... To see that, I couldn't believe it when I saw the 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 little headline on my on my phone, which said, and I I repre- I'm repressing in my head the number. Is it 18? 18 firefighters killed, all from the same company, all from Prescott, Arizona. All had access to those, whatever, these shelters, things that they can get in and zip themselves up that are supposed to protect them if they get caught. Did not 18 firefighters from the same town battling that blaze. It's, it's, uh, It's horrific. Almost too much to take in. That's got to be some kind of horrible kind of record. Maybe not a record, but it has to be, in in my lifetime, I don't think I've ever seen a death toll of firefighters um, that huge. Jeez. Oh, well. And again, I mean, the the weather's odd. It is flat out odd. And odd it will remain until some kind of new norm, which will be long past my passing, uh, finally takes over, I, it would seem.
when I was doing this flying this weekend, one of the most amazing things is, you know, because there's so many storms around, the clouds, when you're in a plane and you're up in the clouds and or right above them, my Lord, these are clouds that are wondrous. And to... The plane clearly was sort of like weaving in and out of some of the big ones that just, you know, like are mounds upon mounds upon mounds. And it's like a kind of a, it's a different world. I, it, it's it's, a, it's a, a, I was going to say a landscape, but it's not a landscape. It is so gloriously beautiful, so awe-inspiring up there. To be amongst these gigantic formations and, and their extraordinary beauty. Um, and I was, just, I was just transfixed. I, I had meant to be reading a book, but there was no way any book was as fascinating as the glory outside my window. And I was sitting next to a guy who was like, and I wanted so much. I really did. I thought, just say something like, look. <laughs> just All you have to do is say, oh, look. This shouldn't be missed. Look at that. It would seem if you're at a point where that, this wondrousness, is not something that holds your attention that, I don't know, God help you. Now, maybe somebody who flies every day, but I fly enough, and you don't always see what I saw this weekend, both coming and going, these amazing, wondrous clouds with their amazing shapes. It was one thing to lie on your back on a, on a summer day and look at these amazing clouds. And that's also something wondrous. And, you know, you see the shapes and you, that one looks like a this, this one looks like a that. But to be up there at their level. And they still have such extraordinary shape. I don't know. Unbelievable. So... I'm avoiding getting into the nitty-gritty because nitty-gritty is so nitty and gritty. It's so unpleasant. Jess, did that not print or did I not push print? Did I did. Print, maybe. Oh. Oh, you have to push print? Mm -hmm. Excuse me. <laughs> I'm trying to get a, 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 a story here about this. Abby, it's one thing. We could talk, of course, about Pennsylvania's budget that, I guess, was passed, huh? With, like, nothing in it. And, and we could talk about the uh, budget that was passed next door in Ohio as disappointing as the PA budget may be mostly for what it does not contain. Uh, at least we are not residents of Ohio because their budget is awesome in what it does contain. And it was sort of like a picture said it all. There was a picture of the governor, John Kasich. Is it Kasich or Kasich? I don't know. And I don't even want to know the guy. And he's happily, proudly putting his John Henry on this uh, piece of legislation. See, I think still didn't print. No. All right. And 
never mind. You know what? Never mind. I'll just deal with it from here. And standing around the governor, smiling proudly, like the, uh, you know, the, 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 the ones who begot this bill, are a bunch of, you can, can go ahead, complete the sentence. I'll give you two words. One will be an adjective and one will be a noun. Standing around the governor, smiling at their creation, were four or five blank, adjective, blank, plural noun. Yes, you would be correct. White men. And they're just pleased as punch by their handiwork. And their handiwork is such an assault on women that it's mind-blowing. No, it's not mind-blowing. How can anybody say it's mind-blowing? It's what's happening in these Republican legislatures from sea to shining sea. Except the good news is, is when it comes to sea to shining sea, our sea coasts tend generally to be governed by Democrats. So you're not seeing this kind of onerous legislation. Uh, what is it with these guys that they have this constant fantasy of, of sticking things up, up women's vaginas? They can't pass a budget without having something in there where, and then we stick this thing up their vagina. What's with these men? Are you aware of what's in the, their budget? It's, it's really, I'm serious. It, it, it makes the Pennsylvania do-nothing budget look uh, positively uh, progressive. Okay, let's see. It, uh, son of a bitch, excuse me. Not only is that not printing, my computer is like jumping and won't stay on a page. Okay, here. Stop it! Stop it! Okay. Um... Understand this is a budget bill for the state of Ohio. Uh, but somehow they use the budget bill to find another way to stick something up women's vaginas. And here's what this bill does. The, the Ohio budget. Any rape crisis center in the state of Ohio now will be operating under a gag order from the state. Any rape crisis counselor will be under the authority of new restrictions when dealing with a distraught... This is a rape crisis center when dealing with a distraught woman who has just been raped. The smiling men of the Ohio legislature, proud as punch, have mandated that those rape crisis counselors cannot say certain things. And in fact, guess what one of those things is to a woman who's been raped? The rape crisis counselor cannot now, by law, tell that raped woman that she can legally terminate any resulting pregnancy. They can't mention it. This same budget essentially, effectively, let's put it that way because that's what it does, it effectively defunds Planned Parenthood clinics throughout the state of Ohio. Now understand, it doesn't matter how much the disinformation and misinformation campaign by, uh, by the other side uh, has been successful, but Abortion is 
this much. It's a teeny weeny part of what Planned Parenthood clinics do. What Planned Parenthood clinics do is women's health. It's where poor women get health care. Where they get, you know, an annual exam. Where they get access to birth control. So that they don't get pregnant. Because they can't afford another child or a child. So poor women who are desirous and responsible of keeping themselves healthy and keeping their families healthy are going to lose their clinics because Planned Parenthood, in as much as it gets much money from donors, also depends, because of its work in essentially being a health clinic for those who don't have access otherwise, had been getting money from some state funding because it provides that care that the state itself should be doing. All right, so this is the Ohio budget. It gags rape crisis counselors. It effectively ends up taking away women's, many women's health clinics in the state. It does the thing that these men in love doing it requires any woman seeking an abortion, which is legal. Excuse me. I know I'm screaming. Oh, my God. Any woman in the state of Ohio seeking an abortion to have to undergo a transvaginal ultrasound. It doesn't matter if the woman doesn't want a probe stuck up her. It doesn't matter if the woman's own doctor says, this is an absolutely unnecessary procedure for you. These smiling men in the Ohio legislature have positioned themselves between every woman in Ohio and her doctor. And get this, the women will be required to foot the bill for the vaginal probe that they didn't need and didn't want. It gets worse. I mean, is that possible? Is this possible that it gets worse? Doctors in Ohio will be legally required to unfurl and read to the women in their office a speech written by these <laughs> men. They will get the speech if they even bring up their desire to terminate a pregnancy. Whether the doctor believes in what he's reading or she's reading or not, it doesn't matter. Whether the doctor believes that his or her patient is in need of whatever information is in this speech, it does not matter. The doctor, what the doctor thinks, 
irrelevant. What the woman thinks, irrelevant. The Republican legislature has spoken. Who the hell are they? Now, Republicans like talking a lot about freedom, and for some reason, freedom, when they talk about it, seems to have to do with a gun. To me, freedom, this is a, a clear example of American freedom being taken away. The freedom of a woman to guard her body from assault by the state. The freedom of a doctor to practice medicine. The freedom and the near sanctity of a doctor-patient relationship. We have a call. Go ahead, please, caller. Hello. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Um, two things I just want to say. Um, these Republicans, what do they think? They're untouchable come election time? they got Teflon coats on? I don't understand, because there's going to be such a backlash, I feel, the next election. If there isn't, shame on us. Well, that's it, though. It, I was going to say to you, uh, sure they feel like they're Teflon coated because they get reelected. Yes. These state legislatures, legislators get reelected time and time and time again. And this is where, because we've had a Republican legislature for some time, and Ohio has, they gerrymander the district so that they're, they're safe. They, yes, they, right. they draw the line. If there's like a Democrat living in a house over there, they draw the border so they uh, can put the Democrat someplace else. It is... Unbelievable. But if the people who realize the threat of all of this, who are disgusted, who are... Uh, another thing I think, too... If they don't vote... It's a little bit different subject, is they need to put term limits on this damn Supreme Court to juggle these people around a little bit, because you get some real jerks in, you're, you're pretty much screwed. That's right. Have Til a good day. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sure. That's right. Till my dying day, my Supreme Court will probably be headed by John Roberts, aided and abetted by the noxious Samuel Alito, the clueless and strangely emotionally constricted Justice Clarence Thomas. And let me not forget the rotund, blowhard Antonin Scalia. Okay, I'm not even done with what they did. Uh, they've also passed the same kind of thing that Pennsylvania was ahead of them on this one. Uh, clinics that provide abortion services will be required to have all kinds of agreements with uh, local hospitals in order for them to perform procedures. And yet, get this, get this, it, in, it mandates that the clinics have transfer agreements, be able to take someone, if necessary, to a full hospital if something goes awry in a procedure. But then the same budget bans public hospitals from establishing agreements with abortion providers. Bans public hospitals from doing it. So where's the hospital that an abortion provider is supposed to partner with? A Catholic hospital? I don't think so. So when I say what they've done is going to close down Planned Parenthood and, and women's health centers all over the state, I'm not kidding. And 
And for the cherry on top of this ugliness, the Republicans in the Ohio legislature decided that they also were now capable of redefining the term pregnancy and the term fetus. They have channeled Noah Webster and Funk and Wagnalls, and they have now decided that a woman is pregnant when an egg has broken through her ovary and has made its way through utopian, utopian, fallopian tubes. <laughs> Utopia fallopia and has encountered a sperm swimming her way. And the sperm has <laughs> broken through. They have decided that the woman is pregnant upon contact. The sperm and the egg. Anyone who knows anything about how this works knows she ain't pregnant yet. <laughs> she's, she's not pregnant yet. You're not pregnant till a fertilized egg successfully implants itself in the uterus. Plenty of fertilized egg doesn't manage that part. They are now saying that, okay, women then are pregnant a lot. We don't even know how many times we've been pregnant. We've been pregnant so many times, oy, according to the Republicans. Now, if you ask me, that would mean in Ohio that an IUD would be against the law, wouldn't it? Because an IUD uh, captures many a fertilized egg before it's implanted. It would also seem to me to make plan B the morning after pill illegal, even though the federal government says it's perfectly legal. Okay, so this is just what one Republican-controlled legislature did in the past week. Your hapless Republican legislature and its hapless governor uh, also passed a budget which is laughably, laughably um, incapable of addressing the largest issues which were before it. They've punted on all of those. So, I don't know. I don't know what the good people are going to do. Ohio has totally lost its way. We're close to losing ours. What's happening here is not much different than what's going on in Texas. It's getting all the, all the publicity in Texas. I can't imagine that their abortion bill that caused that wondrous filibuster and that drew all the attention is any different than this one that passed in Ohio. But I am not aware of an uh, uprising in Ohio, at least women fighting back, people fight. And where are the doctors? Where is any self-respecting M.D. or O.B.G.Y.N. in this. Where the hell are they? They now take their orders from these yahoos in the state capitol? The yahoos now tell them 
when a woman is pregnant? The yahoos now tell them? When a fetus is viable, the yahoos tell the doctors what the doctor must say to a patient? They tell the rape counselor what the rape counselor must say to a raped woman? I know some of you would say, well, I really don't ever hate any. I hate these people. I hate them. I hate their ignorance. I hate their arrogance. I hate their certitude. I hate their absolutism. And I hate their misogyny. They aren't even aware of how threatened they are of women. But they sure as hell are acting out, aren't they? And ladies, I'm sick and tired of the silence from our sector. I lived through much of my life when abortion was not legal. I know what that's like. Believe me, I know what that's like. And all you younger women out there who think everything's been taken care of for you, oh, those, yeah, those hairy arm pitted feminists with their no bras, they took care of all that stuff, apparently. And you are not safeguarding it. It's all going to go away. Back to the alley with you. Back to the alley, back to the shame, back to the death and the blood. See why I want to talk about the pirates? <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a break. I am so, I, I mean, I'm sorry. This is, what kind of a, what kind of America is this? I'll tell you, it's an American heading toward another civil war. It really is. We, we're two countries now, and I wish we were more geographically. It's like, I don't know how all the urban areas and the two coasts are my United States, pretty much. And rural and suburbia, go away, as far as I'm concerned. You nests of Republicans. Go the hell away. I've had it with you. I'll take a break. Email your questions and comments to lynn at pghcitypaper.com or call Lynn at 412-316-3381. Lynn Cullen Live will return in a moment. Go to BergBargains.com for great deals on gift cards from your favorite local restaurants, bars, museums, attractions, and shows. Sign up for our weekly newsletter to hear about new deals first. BergBargains.com, Pittsburgh's best bargains. BergBargains.com. All right, I've gone through all the tracks. Just move through the beats. Do your thing. All right, everyone, let's hear it for West High's own Brooke Turner, a.k.a. DJ Hook. Scratching at my first school dance takes confidence. So we're getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Visit knowhowtogo.org to learn what you should be doing right now to prepare for college. Start taking the steps at knowhowtogo.org. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Illumina Foundation, and the Ad Council. You're listening to Lynn Cullen Live at pghcitypaper.com. Once again, here's Lynn Cullen. Okay. I'm, uh... I'm now attempting to rouse my computer to give me your emails. It is... Do you think my computer is a conservative Republican? Yeah. Seems like a piece of shit. Yeah, a piece of shit, she said. <laughs> Ineffectual, <laughs> nasty piece of crap. It won't, co- it, won't, it won't give me your mail. Are you writing me stuff? I have no capacity to get to it. Maybe at some point. 
So the um, Tribune Review yesterday had a piece on a guy named Luke Ravenstahl. You remember him? He sort of doesn't exist anymore. He's like our little our, 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 our ghost mayor. Um, I'm getting your stuff now. Thank you. And this has to do with the bodyguards and the overtime. And I don't know how this rises to some federal case myself, but it sure does tell you something about our mayor, uh, Luke Ravenstahl. Because the beleaguered taxpayers of Pittsburgh, we paid for babysitters for this mayor for to babysit him as he bar hopped hundreds of times hundreds of times not one but two bodyguards are with the mayor as he drinks and drinks and drinks we're talking about midnight one two Three in the morning. This is our mayor. Any excuse, St. Patty's Day, Fat Tuesday, my birthday, your birthday, he's definitely out. But it doesn't have to be that. And as you know, this is not their regular shift, the bodyguards. So this is OT. These bodyguards made more in overtime than they made in their regular employ because the mayor needed a babysitter or two. So essentially, we the people of Pittsburgh were picking up the tab for the police to babysit our mayor. Now, I remember back in the day when I had to pay a babysitter. But I didn't pay a babysitter what these guys are getting. And then, as we know, the mayor realized that if any, because this is, their time cards are like public record. If anybody starts looking at these guys' time cards, it ain't going to look good for me. So he, he denies it, but at least one of the bodyguards has said the opposite. His three bodyguards are told, don't put in on your time cards any of that OT. I mean, we'll get it to you some, I can't, it'll come some other way, but I don't want that on your timesheets. And the Tribune Review did, you know, really went through all these cards for the years of the mayor's tenure, illustrious tenure. And the bodyguards began omitting the time of day <laughs> that they were employed in babysitting the mayor in January of 2008. So for the last five years, there was no indication that they were staying out till one, two, three in the morning as the mayor drank and drank and drank. The omissions of the times that they were working continued on more than 1,000 time cards until Chief Harper resigned and Acting Chief McDonald came in. And then you see it again. But, of course, by then the mayor is, like, minding his P's and Q's a little bit more. 
they give you in this piece some for instances, and it's mind-boggling. The night before Thanksgiving, one of these guys logged seven hours of overtime working until 3 a.m. on Thanksgiving Day. This is in addition to his regular shift. Okay, that means that he's... And, and if, they're, if the cop's contract is like most union contracts, he's now working on a holiday. That's bigger than overtime. Overtime on ho- and a holiday pay situation, God knows what he's making. Then in January of 2007, the mayor and his bodyguard stayed out until 11 p.m. or later. 11 was the earliest. Ten times in that month. You remember when Snowmageddon happened, remember? And we were all so outraged that the boy mayor was not to be found. He was celebrating his birthday. Now, granted, it's a big birthday, his 30th birthday birthday at Seven Springs. Now, are you aware that when he went up to Seven Springs to celebrate, drink the whole weekend away, celebrating his birthday, that he took a bodyguard? That bodyguard racked up eight hours of overtime the Friday night of Snowmageddon, the 16 hours on the overtime on the next day when the mayor couldn't get back, and then the 16 hours on Sunday. Now, good for them. But again, we, I paid for that. You, if you live in Pittsburgh, you paid for that. Now, for those of you who will say, well, the mayor's entitled to... Let me tell you something. Bill Peduto won't cost us that. Sophie Masloff didn't cost us that. Caligiri didn't cost us that. Murphy didn't cost us that. O'Connor didn't cost us that. No mayor's ever cost us that. Because we never had an immature infant in the position. And you can ask, and you can look around at other mayors in other cities. They don't cost their taxpayers that. One, either they're responsible people, or two, they're mature, or three, they simply want to avoid the appearance of being an immature sot. I'll tell you, these bodyguards made some money. Man alive. I don't know if I have it noted. Let's take this one, Gautner. Gautner. He made over $100,000 in overtime. Atop a salary of 73000 This guy's making almost $200,000 for watching the mayor drink. Wow. And you know what? If all of this stuff hadn't started like, the stench didn't start sort of rising and we started, and the feds hadn't all of a sudden started paying attention, Luke Ravenstahl would be, would have want run in the primary and probably would have won 
And just like I'll be beset and besieged by John Roberts and Antonin Scalia and Sam Alito and Clarence Thomas till my dying day, I would have been beset and besieged by Luke Ravenstahl as the mayor. Because the voters don't pay attention. Sad. Okay. I got to get a break in. We'll be right back. Stick around for more with Lynn Cullen Live after this. Pick up the all-new Pittsburgh City Paper today. Still the number one source for weekend fun in the Berg. Go online now at www.pghcitypaper.com to vote in the 2013 Best of Pittsburgh Readers Poll. And type in the promo code CPTSTIX for your chance to win Taylor Swift tickets. Vote now before it's too late. Pittsburgh City Paper, available at over 1,700 locations throughout western Pennsylvania. And on the web at pghcitypaper.com. You are round MVP. Yeah, man. Yo, Drew, I finally got round MVP. Round MVP. (laughs) No way. That was some ownage. Finally earning round MVP takes determination. So will getting into college. I've got what it takes. So do you. Visit knowhowtogo.org to learn what you should be doing right now to prepare for college. Start taking the steps at knowhowtogo.org. Brought to you by the American Council on Education, Lumina Foundation, and the Ad Council. Have a question or an opinion? Call Lynn Cullen at 412-316-3381 or email lynn at pghcitypaper.com. Now, more with Lynn Cullen Live. Okie doke. Jess, I was just looking. I'm, I'm sorry to say, but your hair clashes with my sign. <laughs> you can't wear orange anymore. Do you wear orange? I don't really wear orange. No, I don't think you do. Well, don't. Okay. <laughs> Jess has new pink hair. I do. Is there, what was the name of the color? Um, flamingo. Something. Flamingo? Yeah, yeah it is. Sort of. <laughs> oh, it is sort of flamingo. Uh... uh John Hanger... Does that ring uh, ring a bell? I should hope so. He is a Democrat, good man, wants to take on Corbett in the next gubernatorial. He has said this about the budget Corbett smilingly (laughs) signed. And it's, and he's right. He says Corbett had the opportunity to create create about 186,000 jobs in this state by increasing funding for our infrastructure. And it's crumbling, as we know. We're number one in the country in terms of bridges that are about ready to fall. Number one. Wish that were bragging rights, but it ain't. So there's no transportation measure got passed. Uh, He tied the funding to fix our roads and bridges to privatizing the state stores. He thought he was being so clever. So now, last time I looked, our state stores are still like they you, like they always were. And our bridges are still like they always were. And 186,000 construction workers are unemployed, like they probably were. That's your Republican legislature and governor at work. Good job. Good job. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to the voters. Do you know there have been fewer jobs created in the state of Pennsylvania in the last 12 months of this Republican administration than were created in the state of Delaware? Think about Delaware on the map and then think about Pennsylvania. We're Goliath to their David. Look at the populations of those two states. We're Goliath to their David. Delaware! created more jobs. 
Then you look at funding for education. This governor and these Republicans have been adept at taking, actually, much easier probably than taking candy from babies. They take education from the neediest of our children. This budget that the smiling Corbett and his smiling minions in Harrisburg signed, patting themselves on the back, by the way, congratulating each other, offers no real, believe me, relief for all of these beleaguered school districts. Forget about districts, beleaguered children, our children. Oh, I know somebody else's children, right? So we see more teachers being cut. All you got to do is look as far as Wilkinsburg. More teachers being cut. Education programs being cut. Property taxes being raised because the state has simply abdicated its responsibility. We have got to get these Republicans out of here. I'm not saying the Democrats, as constituted in the state of Pennsylvania, are so wonderful. Because this whole state's political system is corrupted. But we do know that Republicans in power just love screwing the little people. They love probing into women's vaginas. They love making it even harder for the needy, for minorities, for the disabled, for the elderly to live, to learn, to access jobs. They sneer at public transportation because they don't take it. And in fact, they don't even know anybody who does. I don't know what we have to do to rouse all of the people who have been harmed by this legislature and this governor to get out there and throw them out. I don't know. What does it take? Corbett signs budget. No agreement on transportation in the budget. No agreement on pensions in the budget. No agreement on liquor store privatization in the budget. No agreement on Medicaid in the budget. The fact of the matter is, this is a bunch of crap. And you know what? You are paying the country's largest legislature, full-time legislature, unbelievable num amounts of money to do this. That's work. They're all going on summer vacation now. There, we did that. We're off. Outrage doesn't even rise to the level <laughs> of, where, of where we should be. It's, uh, it, it, it's like it should be approaching, uh, you know, I, I don't know, Armageddon. Oh, man. Uh, Joseph uh, said that the mayor could be seen partying at McFadden's on the North Shore this last weekend, well into the wee hours of the night. Well, you know... As everybody said, he's a bachelor, he's got... But there's something, you know, when you're the mayor, and if you were mature, and he's not a kid anymore, he's a father. Um, he still doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. I mean, if he likes to drink so much, why doesn't he just go to one of the wonderful state stores or beer b distributors and get 
what he needs and invite a few of his pals over to his house. Why not just drink at home? What is so wonderful about the atmosphere of a bar, especially when he's in some jeopardy right now, and if he were smart, he wouldn't be seen going out drinking. He doesn't care, I guess, or he knows the fix is in, and he's in big trouble, and he might as well get his drink while he can because he ain't going to be able to get it in the pen. I don't know. What's going on? I don't know. Oh, so there's a piece in the New York Times today about, like, this is, this is one of those headlines you, you, you look at and you say, duh. Here's the headline. When Italians chat, hands and fig- fingers do the talking. Duh. Yeah. I mean, come on. I said, yeah, uh, this hasn't been noticed before. I was once chastised by the general manager of WTAE television who called me into his office. And this was after I had just won some big award. What the hell was it? I'd won something. A big award. I think it was an Emmy. And I was told that Mr. Barber wanted to see me in his office. And I thought, ho, 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 ho. I walked down there. I took my seat in front of his big mahogany desk. I crossed my legs and I looked at him like, go, go, go. Come on. I want to hear it. I want to hear it. (laughs) And you know what he said? I didn't think you were Italian. What? (laughs) And I said, what? And he said, I want to talk to you about your (laughs) hand-waving. He was, he said, when you're on the set, your hands are waving in front of your face. You're thising and thatting. You're boo, 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 boo. And I was so, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you're expecting one thing and you get quite the other. And I don't, there were so many chemical changes in my body as he spoke. None of them good. And it was like I was thinking, you son of a bitch. So there was anger was right up there. Anger might have been number one. Followed close behind by rage. Followed shortly thereafter by homicidal thoughts. (laughs) And he suggested that when I am on the set, I would sit with one hand on top of the other, and he showed me. And that way you will maybe just keep that hand down, and you will, I guess, be more presentable. (laughs) I vaguely remember saying, The newsroom is full of women who sit on the set with one hand over the other. I don't sit on sets with one hand over the other. I gesture when I talk. That's me, me, and I will not change. And I stormed out of the place. Now, normally you don't say something like that, but I don't give a damn. He's wrong. I'm right. Fuck him. That's what I thought. I stormed from there into the poor news director's office, who to this day remembers the moment, because I was screaming at the top of my lungs. I remember him saying, shut the door, and I I didn't. Shut the door, I remember him screaming. I was screaming too loud to shut the door. It was like, why don't people... You know, this is why TV is so boring. Can you see that all the anchors go to the same school and learn their body language, how they turn their heads in a certain way? And if they gesture, it's a certain kind of a choreographed. And there's no personality allowed. I wasn't an anchor. I was a 
feature-ish reporter. I was supposed to have personality, I thought. I hate, you wonder why I hate television so much. I hate television because it never knew what to do with me. Anyway, so I'm not Italian, but I do talk with my hands. And it says here that in Italy, even Italians, though, get in trouble with authorities for talking like Italians. And the Italian Supreme Court actually ruled that an, a man talking in a public square to a friend, gesturing, who accidentally slugged an 80-year-old woman who was walking by, that he was liable, the talker, for civil damages to the 80-year-old woman who walked into his flying hand. And the Italian Supreme Court, this blows my mind, says, the public street is not a living room. The habit of accompanying conversation with gestures, while certainly licit, becomes illicit in some contexts. So, <laughs> I was blown away by that. So anyway, uh, actually people studying this have, have, uh, have determined there are about 250 gestures that Italians use in everyday conversation that are readily recognized. Little, little teeny things. They, they, they talk about once when the despicable Berlusconi was greeting Michelle Obama and the president, that he went like this. They said he approached Michelle with his arm, with his palms open, and then as he got closer, he pulled his fingers together and rubbed them while shaking his hand, which is to say, va va voom. All right, well, that's that. I thank you very much. I don't know what for, but thanks anyway. And uh, heads up, I am, you know, it's summer, people are on vacation, um, and uh, that includes me, and I will be on vacation next week, and, uh, uh, and I will be on, we're not here on the 4th this week, so, I mean, wouldn't you? I figured, what's the point of coming in on a Friday, right? Because I'm leaving on a vacation and coming. So, this is a three-day week. No me next week, and then we'll be back on track uh, upon my return, which would be on, I guess, July 15th. Correct? Correct. Okay. So, thanks very much. Again, I'm not sure what for. And I don't know what to do with myself because there's no pirate game. And um, have a great day. Toodaloo. Toodaloo. Lynn Coven Live, Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and archived at pghcitypaper.com. The opinions expressed on Lynn Coven Live are those of the host and do not necessarily reflect the viewpoints of Pittsburgh City Paper, Steel City Media, and its advertisers.